Hello everyone. How are you? Oh, that's good. Um, yeah, it's a bit drab here, uh, but I think we'll we'll press on. Uh, so what I want to talk about today is uh, ways of uh, sort of creating atmospherics within the, within your playing and your your composition. Um, now I'm going to start with um, I'm going to start with a fairly simple piece. Uh, this is based on um, a Spanish. Um, a Spanish piece called uh, La Catientos um, and it's all based on, on an A chord so you're just playing now that um, that sense of repetition that kind of enforces two things. First of all, that basically that you mean business, that you're you know that, that that's your statement. You're saying, right, well I'm I'm really angry, I'm I have that you know. um, but that A that both reinforces your statement. Or you can look at it the other way that 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 that's the thing you you're fighting against. That sets the tone of what you're fighting against um, or what you're upset about. Because it just it just drones out and. Uh, so so no matter what you play. As long as you bring it back to that A chord, it kind of frames what you do. It kind of frames what what um, what, what what you're doing. Um, so it's uh, so it's both sort of re reinforcing, um, you know, the, those statements that you that you're making, those mu musical statements that you're making through your, through your soloing. But it also um, it also illustrates again this this um, this thing which uh, which is is keeping you down or, or you know it, uh, that thing that you're most sort of upset about you know that, that you're most uh, depressed about. Um, I'm not repeating myself too much there. <laughs> well, of course I am because. So so that so it does start to have that it starts to take on that. That Spanish feel, you know. Um, and before you say, "Oh, that's not proper tientos," well, I, I know that, but it's, this is just for illustrative purposes. So, um, so that's one ex exercise that we can do. Uh, there's another one, the um, the second movement of the the Concerto de Arantes. That you know that. in A minor. See that A minor just sort of it sort of enforces that that pathos in in the in the piece. And then you can put some more variations.
Yeah. Yeah. So um. So so. So it's kind of becomes paradoxical that 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 chord, it's both enforcing the statements that we're making, but it's also reinforcing the problem that we're sort of almost like fighting against or struggling against. And so that's you know so um, so as a, as a from a technical perspective. That's um, you know even though we're sort of like reinforcing what we're doing, we're, the, the paradox is that, that 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 that's still keeping us back in that pinned in that position. Uh, there's another uh, example which is the um, the Albinoni ad adagio, uh, which was actually um, there's a bit of debate over whether it was Giazzotto actually sort of compose that because it was based on um I'll tell you that in a minute but if I actually play it's a G minor you got this really deep um G minor chord played on the organ So I mean, the, I always thought that was like a that's like a, a Good Friday type uh, piece, you know, where um, you know, like, like sort of veneration of the cross type, you know, and um, look at what you've done, you know, that that kind of thing. But uh, Giazzotto, um, he I think it was actually it was either composed or recomposed in the 1950s that so he took this fragment of a piece that had been written by um, Tommaso Albinoni and wrote this this piece about like the bombing of, of uh, Dresden because like, this, this fragment of this thing was like all that was left of this this manuscript so so the piece is actually more about you know like the, the bombing of Dresden uh, during the Second World War and in that perspective look at what you've done more about you know like the look at the actual horror of, of the war and what it's you know that saying uh, this should this can't happen again, but then of course wars do happen again, and um, you know, um, and because like there's a there's a good variation of that. Like Ingve Ingve Malmsteen, he did um, he put it in E minor, and he made it more sort of bluesy. I mean, I'm, like for copyright reasons, I'm not going to play all of it. I'm not going to play it exactly like like Ingve played it. But right, but no. So, so I'm, okay, I, made, I made a few mistakes there, but but you kind of get the you, you kind of get the idea that sometimes you can just take a well-known piece and then just just play it in a different key, um, see, see, you know, see if you can get a get a different feel out of it. Um, and then one more before I go, which is um, like from the opening of the uh, Sibelius Violin Concerto in in D minor. <laughs> Saddest of all the keys. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that starts in the this D minor chord played on the strings. It's all very quiet.
gradually the, the piece starts to build, but it sets up that atmosphere of being, um, you yeah, know, it's about Finland, so it's nice, it's cold, that sort of Jared um, landscape, you know, that's why it's like, you know, it's really cold, but, but you've got this problem as well, and you're like, you know, you can't separate your problem for, from it, from the, the rest of the landscape. That's, that's a classic sort of rom romanticism idea. You know, somehow your, what your problem is, is linked with the environment that's going on around you and you don't, you don't fully understand it, but all you can really do is paint this picture which somehow you're involved with it. You know. um, actually, there's one more we could have a look at as well. Now, I'm not gonna give you all of it again for copyright reasons, but, um, I recently rewatched the uh, Rage of the Lost Art, you know, with um, you know Harrison Ford and um, and etc. etc. And there's that there's that classic Well of Souls uh, scene. I mean, I've talked about it before in videos because, but I just think it's a it's a it's a classic scene. But you know, with those tritones, and it just um, it just sets up the atmosphere of you know like the Indies in that you know, in the map room. Um, and you're kind of thinking, well, should he really be there? You know, should you actually go looking for the Ark of the Covenant? You know, maybe you should just just leave it alone. You know, but there he is. You know, and as it and as it's unfolding, it, you know, as, as the scene's unfolding, that um, there's other things start coming in. You know, there's um, you know, he's getting his notebook out and um, and he's putting the staff in the in the hole and then you've got all this Egyptian stuff going on in the background so then there's this counter theme comes in um, so it's kind of like takes you back to like the Egyptian civilization and then even earlier than that uh, and then of course um, sort of Salah is um, you know he's in the background and he's you know trying to get a rope together and everything and then like the the Germans and Belloc you know they're there they're coming wise to the, the, to the fact that Indy's got now knows where the Ark is. And so there's all those sort of little military things going on over the top, but it's still arranged over the top of those two chords. You know, and that's kind of, that sets your atmosphere. So we could, we could have a look at doing things like... Just doing that with tritone. Or, um, Yeah, and, and so on and so on. So, um, so I hope that's given you some uh, some ideas. Um, you know, because it's sort of it, it it should help. Actually, you know, just actually frame that problem. Um, if you like this, then I think uh, I might I might do some more you know, along these ideas um, because this is things I've been playing around for, you know for, for, for quite a while. So uh, yeah, all right. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll I'll see you next time.